Hi guys, <clears throat> welcome to our presentation. Uh, my name is Jan and I'm here today to tell you a bit about the OSR community. We are basically a group of people who believe that uh, we should use more open source software, not just in our daily lives, but uh, mainly in our work. And since our uh, area, work area is AEC, building, um, engineering and so on, we are focusing on this. Um, OSR stands for Open Source and Architecture. We are, however, dealing with all the areas of, of building industry with custom es estimation, time scheduling, um, structural engineering, and so on. Um, why do we think it's important? Uh, as you probably know, um, the, the industry has been dominated by just a few huge players in the last years, mostly just Autodesk and, and SolidWorks, maybe uh, Graphsoft. And uh, a lot of people are complaining about this um, because it seems that they don't really focus on on development, on, on doing anything useful for the users, um, and also they just try to block the users in their um, uh, in, in their software, okay. uh, and not really, you know, like uh, Microsoft claims that they're they're doing a lot for for um, open them. It seems like they're just trying to get more users to to use to start get. And we believe that's that's not really right. And we believe that people should actually be free to to use their data, to own their data, and so on. And that's why it's always started open open mm. As I said, we are we're not a software like a particular software project. We are more uh, focused. That's kind of what makes us different to all open source projects because we mostly focus on, on promotion, on presenting already existing uh, open source projects and, and present them, um, try to get them to talk to each other, to connect, to, to work together and to build uh, working solutions that people could really use in their, in their work. Um, I'm not really going to go into why we believe open source software is important because as uh, this is a conference on open source software, I believe uh, most people know that. And if you don't, then you're welcome to read about this on our website. I'll tell you more about uh, how we, what we do and how we do it. Uh, so the first thing uh, we, we did, we had a website, we made a website where we present the, uh, the open source projects we, we support. There are also articles from our members, there are news, um, so if you're interested in, in, in open source software for building industry, it's a great, great place to just see all the news. There's also a calendar of events, um, which is now a bit empty. There's just this uh, Connect conference, but we will, we will try to fill it more with more uh, meetings and, and so on. Here you can just uh, see what, what, what's coming and what, what's happening. Um, the kind of main uh, main place where you can see all our work is our wiki, because uh, what when stuff is fixed, when stuff is uh, kind of misadded, it all ends up in our wiki. Um, there are a few few bigger areas you can of course read a bit about uh, what we do, what we are, who we are there. But the main um, um, core of, of our, uh, our work is our uh, free software directory. This is a 
kind of a list of all the software we support, uh, we talk to, we, we help present and promote. Uh, there are, as you can see, there are many different areas. Uh, and if you're just looking for what software you could use, it's a great place to start. Just scroll through and see what, what we think is good. Uh, what, what you can also you can also see all the licenses, you can read a bit about what it what the particular software can do, what it cannot do, perhaps. And for many of them, we also provide some sort of documentation and tutorials. Um, yeah, there's, there's uh, CAD design, there's uh, GIS, there's um, conceptual design. We also have all sorts of analysis, software here, and so on. Uh, the second thing we do, as I said, we try to uh, help people use the software in their real life, and that's why we focus on building useful or uh, workflows. Uh, we already have, as you can see, a few projects here. It's mostly FreeCAD, but there are also some, uh, some other projects uh, from Blenderbin uh, and other software. We can. I think this is a great, great way to learn and, and to start with open source software. You can just see that what people already achieved with, with open source software, and that you can really use it in everyday work in everyday life, uh, and adapt this workflow. And you can see that you really can be productive using just free software. So, for example, this is uh, our own house where we just try different uh, different programs and, and so on. Uh, and we build this kind of imaginary house. Um, yeah. Now, one also very big part of our wiki is the documentation of uh, open source uh, software projects because uh, unfortunately, or not unfortunately, but uh, like the developers usually don't have so much time to focus on documentation, on presentation, and so on. And that's why uh, open source software is notoriously undocumented. And we try to fix that. So uh, we just, some, some of us just focus on, on writing wiki tutorials and, and really just describe what which software can do and how to use it and to help users start with it. So this for example um, a wiki site documentation for Blender Brain. Uh, I think our wiki is the most detailed place and most detailed documentation of Blender Brain. Uh, of course the the place where, it, where it's most live is our, our uh, forum. There you can meet all our members. Uh, you can ask all the questions that come to mind. We, we discuss uh, every, every possible, there are no stupid questions. And uh, you usually get an answer to any problem very quickly. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of where it all started. Uh, this is all where all the ideas come together, and and when we when we decide what what to do, uh, which software we should support, and so on. Um, few of the members are also active uh, in uh, universities, and we are one of our projects uh, is also developing an open source or open art curriculum, which would uh, be then taught in universities. We haven't gotten that far yet, because the ideas uh, and the directions the different people want to take are quite wide. Uh, but the main idea is that we, we, that we just teach students uh, how to do open and use just free software for this. 
And I think that would be really great uh, for many reasons. Uh, you can learn much more because uh, free software usually or open source software usually forces you to understand what you're doing much, much deeper than, than the proprietary software. Mm, and you get to own your own data, own the data. You can just access all your data when you when you not student anymore. You don't just you don't need to buy the software afterwards, uh, and so on. As I said, unfortunately, this is not yet uh, or this is far from finished. Um, what has gotten much further? Is our post-art learning soft, uh, not software, but server. Uh, this is just a database of tutorials. Uh, the wiki, there are, mm -hmm. there are documentation, there are workflows, but uh, this is a place where you can really just learn the software from scratch. So you, you just pick what, what you'd like to do. And uh, there are not so many uh, tutorials uh, written by us as far as I know. It's mostly just links to the great resources we found or recommends to, to learn this, but it's a really nice database and you can really get into it really quickly. Um, we have meetings every month. Uh, we record them and we post them on our YouTube channel. Mm, the rule is that each month there's one uh, usual developer of, of uh, some open source project and he presents his, uh, uh, his project to the community. And then we, mm, from time to time, we discuss also some, some things we we need to do, decide uh, for the community what would we do, what, what should we do, and some things need to be decided kind of in person. That's why we meet and decide and talk about it. Uh, this is all recorded and also posted online. And this is also one of the uh, great ways to promote the new, new projects um, because, yeah, we have quite a few subscribers and, and the new project get quite a bit of attention and I post them on our YouTube channel. Um, so that's pretty much uh, all I wanted to say about our introduction. We, as I said, we do promotion and that we of course also have uh, quite many members who are active developer, developers. And who actually develop our, uh, the software that we use, which is of course great because we get to tell them what we want to uh, have, and they develop it for us. Um, so we have five short presentations of of some of the projects that uh, are kind of the core of our of our software base. Uh, it's Blendering, IFC Toolbox, Double J Comaker, and FreeCAD. And we, I'll just play the five pre-recorded presentations for you now. Hey everyone, my name is Dion, and I'm one of the developers behind the free software IFC Open Shell and the Blender BIM add-on. I've got a degree in architecture, and I work on built projects day to day. I've also been part of some other free software you might know, like Radiance, OpenStreetMaps, KDE, and Gentoo Linux. Since today's talk is quite short, I'd like to focus on three things. I'll start with the importance of open data standards for our industry. Our industry needs to work together more so we can do better things with our built environment. To digitally enable this, we need two things, open data standards we can agree on and open source tools that we are empowered with. I'd like to talk first about the open data standards and then I'll introduce two free software projects. The first one is the Blender BIM add-on which enables end users to engage with open BIM data. The second is IFC Open Shell, which enables developers and power users to build their own free software tools for BIM. 
Open data standards is fundamental to how our digital systems can speak to one another. The current state of the industry is that our digital building data is mostly locked into proprietary data schemas or schemas that are poorly adopted or limited in scope or too generic or loosely structured. This makes digital collaboration a pain. The technical solution to this problem is an international open data standard for BIM. This has been in development since the 1990s. However, the problem is that most of our tools don't work natively with it. We're still using proprietary bespoke data, and at best, we have developed partial interoperability tools to import and export. This misses the fundamental problem. We need to start speaking open data natively, not rely on translations. The projects I'm involved with allow users and developers to natively work with open BIM data so that in the future, our digital built environment will be built on a foundation of structured, standardized open data. The first project for users to experience this is the Blender BIM add-on. It started in mid-2019 when I helped design a small building and we didn't want to use proprietary tools. It turns Blender into an open BIM authoring platform. Users can natively use IFC data and visually edit and create BIM data through the Blender interface. This is different to other BIM applications that support IFC because we use IFC natively. There's no data loss, there's no imports, no exports, and BIM data across all disciplines from architectural, structural, costing, scheduling, and the rest are seamlessly integrated and parametrically linked. Because it's based on international standards, we can mix and match with other BIM software. It's still a very young project and still in alpha development. And despite this being incomplete and unstable, it's had quite a bit of recognition. It's being taught in academia, participated in Google Summer of Code, won the 2020 Building Smart Technology Award, and an epic mega grant. It's been used in all project phases, from early concept design, project coordination, documentation, fabrication, and facility management. It's got a long way to go, but if we succeed, the world could be designed, built, and operated with first-class, open BIM, free software. The second project is IFC OpenShell. This is the engine which powers the Blender BIM add-on, free CAD, as well as numerous other free and proprietary software in the market. Whereas the Blender BIM add-on is aimed at users, IFC OpenShell is aimed at developers. At its core, it provides a C++ library to manipulate IFC data, as well as Python bindings for all the IFC schema versions and serializations. It also provides geometric analysis, including tessellation of parametric shapes, BVH tree generation, format conversion, 2D sectioning, and upcoming voxel-based analysis. At a higher level, it provides a series of utilities for common BIM data interrogation, as well as an API for over 500 authoring tasks with undo and redo support. It also offers a suite of Unix-style utilities, which are cross-platform. It is everything from tools from clash detection, model diffing, to facility management handover. To get your feet wet, here's a hello world in BIM. Here is creating a building with 15 lines of code, and here's a few commands you can run headlessly. We won't have time to go through in detail, but I hope I've given a short preview of the tools that we're building, but more importantly, why we're building it. We're building it to enable a more open, transparent, and ethical built environment. Thank you very much. Okay, <clears throat> that was Dion. Um, we are continue with a, uh, with a project that directly works with uh, IFC OpenShell. As I said, IFC OpenShell is kind of backend, and uh, we will look at the IFC toolbox. Hi, everyone. I'm Yusheng Wang. Here is a brief introduction to IFC toolbox. IFC Toolbox is a collection of tools for simplifying the basic IFC-related operations in your daily work. It's a .NET library based on XBeam and IFC OpenShell, open resourced on GitHub. Also, there is a free GI application with the same name in Microsoft Store for no-code users. For download and install IFC Toolbox GI application, it's actually quite simple. First, open your Microsoft Store in your computer, then search IFC Toolbox in the right-tab corner, and finally, click the Install button. That's all. 
we have been working on our first five tools, FC Optimizer, FC Relocator, FC Converter, FC Splitter, and finally FC Anonymizer. Okay, let's jump into the demonstration. FC Optimizer is a tool for reducing the size of large IFC files by optimizing the IFC resource layer instance and eliminate float point offset in geometry. You can start with import your IFC file here. For the configuration, the left section is for merge duplication entities in IFC, and the right one is for float point rendering option. You can hit the optimize button to start the process. The important thing is that this optimization process is zero data loss. And you can find the technical details in our monthly meetup video on the OSR YouTube channel. And when it's finished, you can saw the results in the report section. It's nearly optimized 40% of the original file. IFC Relocator is for relocating the IFC World Coordinate System and the Project Coordinate System. There is two parts of an IFC file exported by different origin. The models fail to figure it. So if we take the file which needs to be relocated and input the correct location, or just take another file as a reference, after processing, you can see the model is using the location from the reference file and it's combined together. FC Splitter is for splitter FC files by tips or containers, like seat, building, level. It provides six different ways to split an FC file. For example, you can split only the FC world entities from your model. The result file will contain only those tips which you have selected. Or if you split the FC file by level, it will create several FC files for each level you selected. FC Converter is a tool for easily convert FC files to other formats like OBG, Colata, Step, SVG, etc. This tool is based on FC Open Shell command line to FC Convert. We made some dynamic options based on the target format selected by the user and wiped the most used options in the current release. Here is a result converted to OBG format and another one for extract the 2D drawing and CSV from the same IFC file. The last one is IFC Anonymizer, which is made for anonymized user-related information and specific product-related information, simplifies the model sublimation process in bidding activities or design computations. Normally, we need to verify a lot of user-related information in the IFC file, like IFC person, IFC organization, and FC owner history, etc. FC Anonymizer is made for automate this process. And if you need to anonymize some product related information, you can enable the replace rule table. Create replace rules for anonymize the manufacturer's brand name or the product model name. You can also export or import those rules for later use. For conclusion, each tool source code is available in GitHub. The code translation for existing tools is driven by our community, and we will definitely try to bring more tools in FC Toolbox in the future. Download it, try it, give us a review or give us some feedback in our Discord channel. Any kind of feedback is welcome. Thanks for your attention. Yep, so there was Yu Sheng Wan. Uh, he just recently actually joined our community and we'll talk to them about our presentations and one of our meetups and we presented this toolbox and I believe this is really great because it's really really polished and works great and it's really like kind of a finished product you can you can use as an open source software you can present it to your colleagues and, and it looks nice and works nice so I think that's really great. Uh, the next presentation will be topology from Basim Yabi. He's a research worker uh, in academia and he he joined our community to work with us uh, and to develop his, his research partner and he'll talk about the logic. Uh, yeah, it's really amazing. So please pay attention. It's not an easy topic to understand.
Hi everyone, my name is Wasim Jabi and I am with the Welsh School of Architecture, Cardiff University. It's my pleasure today to speak to you about Topologic. Topologic is a software library that resulted from a research project collaboration between Cardiff University and UCL that was funded by the Leverholm Trust Foundation from 2016 to 2019. The aim of Topologic is to enhance the representation of space in building information modeling software and to help designers to set out their projects spatially, topologically, and semantically using the lightest possible models that contain the highest possible amount of information. These conceptual topological models can then be used as the drivers of more complex BIM models and allow either humans or software to populate them with BIM components based on rules and standards. This essentially reverses the arrow of, on BIM's demand for complexity at the outset of the design process and allows the designers to think first more strategically about their projects. Topologic entities are fully spatially resolved and inherently contain topological information. That is, they can tell you which subtopologies were used to construct them which larger topologies they are a part of, and to what other topologies they are connected. This spatial and topological information is very powerful in that it helps the designer make decisions about uh, next steps in the design process. What you see here on the screen, for example, is uh, a classification of the walls, whether they are external or internal, and then for internal walls, what kind of spaces they are uh, dividing. So if they are dividing two small spaces, they are color coded in blue. And if they are dividing a large space and a small space, they are uh, color coded in red. And this type of uh, topological query happens automatically once you update the, the design that you are dealing with. Topologic entities also contain semantic information stored in custom dictionaries. Unlike simple attributes in other software, dictionaries in topologic get combined when geometric operations are conducted on topologies, but can also influence the geometric result. For example, imagine you have a building model made from a core, multi-story atrium, for example, and a perimeter zone of offices and other spaces. When it comes time to slice the building into floors, the the atrium cell in the middle, by virtue of its embedded dictionary, can ignore the slicing operation so that it can continue to be a contigu contiguous unified vertical space. In addition, if you intersect two spaces that have dictionaries, the resulting space will automatically inherit and combine the dictionaries of its parent spaces. This can be very powerful. For example, um, let's say you have a living room cell that can be intersected or is intersecting with a kitchen cell, and the intersection then can examine these dictionaries and decide based on pre-specified rules that it will become, for example, a breakfast area cell, just because it knew that it came from a living room uh, and a kitchen. One can imagine the possibilities of examining the results of intersecting public, semi-public, uh, private and private spaces and using the embedded information to specify what to do in each, in each case. As you will see in the next presentation, Topologic has also been successfully used for creating well-formed and complex IFC models based on shape grammar rules. And it has also been successfully used to create the input for energy analysis software using OpenStudio and Energy Plus, as you can see here. On the left is uh, our uh, effort to create something called Topologic Energy in Blender, which allows you to uh, simulate a, the energy analysis of, or the energy performance, excuse me, of a building. Uh, using Open Studio and Energy Plus, completely a free solution, 100% open source. And uh, on the right is uh, Mikhail de Gonziac's work with SAM 2.0 uh, that has incorporated Topologic in it, and you can export to GBXML models uh, and using Grasshopper. Topologic has also been used in research on blockchains and smart contracts, as you can see in the publications that we have co-authored with uh, Theodore Dunas and uh, Davide Lombardi. Finally, Topologic is and will always be free and open source. Its IP is jointly owned by Cardiff University and UCL, and its distribution is governed by an AGPL license. 
The base code is written in C++. It works within Dynamo and Grasshopper and currently has Python bindings that allow it to be used through Sverjob within Blender. We are currently working on improving and simplifying these Python bindings. So if you use it through Blender, you will have a fully free and open source solution and you will be able to integrate it with Blender BIM, Homemaker, OpenStudio Energy Plus, and many other free and open source solutions. Thank you for listening. And if you have any questions, you see my email on the screen and I'm happy to answer them. Thank you very much. Yep, that was Dr. Krasim Chabi. Uh, and now you will see a great uh, example of um, cooperation we achieved, kind of, I think, I believe, because Bruno Postel will, will um, present his homemaker, uh, Blender Adam, which directly uses Top Logic to generate um, to generate spaces. Uh, not just spaces, but the whole building, actually. Hi. I'm Bruno Postel, and this is a very quick introduction to the Homemaker add-on, a tool for designing buildings. It's a tool that starts with the spaces and works down from there. What you see here is Blender, a free software modeling, rendering and animation tool that's already heavily used within the AEC industry. It's an extremely powerful application and more than capable for this task of drawing a collection of cells representing spaces or rooms in a building. This process would be similar in any number of other 3D mesh or solid modeling applications. Here, I'm drawing what will become a non-manifold mesh. The idea is that each cell is fully enclosed. Vertical faces represent walls and horizontal faces represent floors. This will be processed by Topologic as what it calls a cell complex. Topologic discards any geometry that doesn't define an enclosed space, so I can model overlapping faces without worrying about aligning vertices or other fiddly details. The Homemaker add-on analyzes this cell complex and dismembers it into a collection of paths or traces that form the basis for generating IFC elements such as walls, roofs, footings, slabs, windows, etc. What we get is IFC data in Blender. The Blender BIM the add-on that you see here transforms Blender into a native IFC editor and authoring package. Let's go back and change some stuff, maybe add some pitched roofs. I'm not designing a real building, so I won't worry about how steep they are. This is an iterative design process. I can start with some simple geometry, generate an IFC model, then go back and refine it, moving walls and floors, adding, taking away, and reconnecting the building at a spatial level. The details will take care of themselves. Each of the faces that represent walls, roofs, floors, etc. can be assigned a construction style. These styles are customizable through a hierarchical inheritance system, allowing a build up of materials, extrusions and assets such as windows and doors. Obviously, window types, sizes and spacings can be set however you like. And here I'm using some default lightweight styles that ship with the add-on. You can create your own styles to share or keep for future reuse. Changing the construction of each building element is just a matter of assigning a predefined style to the geometry. By default, the add-on treats all of the topologic cells as a generic living space, so they get external windows and they get interconnecting doors. If we want to distinguish room types, then I need to tag the spaces as bedrooms, stairs, kitchen, retail, etc. The resulting homemaker model is deeply layered. Not only are the IFC elements well defined and ready to go into a normal design and construction workflow, but there is a full structural model here ready for load analysis and a complete system of second level space boundaries ready for thermal and solar analysis. While I do this, I'll explain some of the history of the software. The original homemaker application evolves building designs completely non-interactively using Christopher Alexander's pattern language as fitness criteria. This works surprisingly well and goes a long way towards demonstrating that a pattern language can define a complete building program. But what became obvious while developing this previous application was that some kind of intermediate tool was needed that reinserted the role of a designer into the process. This tool should allow a human to direct the process by arranging spaces, the basic geometry of the building, rather than letting computational evolution via mutation and crossover do it in an unsupervised manner. This new Interactive tool is the Homemaker add-on that you see here.
the topologic model is still present, so the building can be easily checked for circulation and access issues. Topologic is a serious design aid, and we can work with the building design as a whole rather than as a collection of products. The plan with this add-on is to reintroduce functionality from the main Homemaker project, so further extensions can be made that give real-time feedback to the designer on design quality using the pattern language as fitness criteria. With Bendermin, I can query the IFC model as a database, I can make modifications, I can even export a bill of quantities, or and I, you can even export a step file for transfer to other BIM software such as FreeCAD here, or generate 2D drawings using IFC Open Shell. Here it is, automatically creating 2D plans and elevations in SVG format. Just a few months ago, I knew nothing of Python programming. The Homemaker add-on is completely new, all of it written in Python in the last year. This is the power of free and open source software. We have these awesome tools like Blender, FreeCAD, Topologic, Blender BIM, and IFC Open Shell that are ready for serious work. Thanks for listening. Yep, so that was Topologic and Homemaker which work great together. And to wrap it up, uh, we have Rafael Mike Castro who will talk about uh, his work in FreeCAD, which um, is kind of the most finished uh, software you can use for, for 2D documentation, because Blender uh, right now focuses more on the IFC core, IFC export, and so on. Uh, in, in, uh, and in FreeCAD, you can really you can really use FreeCAD for production. So that's why that's why Rafael will talk about that. Hi everyone, my name is Rafael Moya, and I'm going to give you a short introduction about FreeCAD for architects and AEC industry. What is FreeCAD? FreeCAD is a 3D parametric software that it has been developed by a group of global volunteers for around 19 years. It is free and open source. That means everything you produce is yours forever. It supports many file formats, including DXF, STL, and IFC files. It runs under Linux, Mac, and Windows system. It can be used in many areas, such as mechanical engineer, electrical engineer, architecture, etc. It can be expanded by add-ons and Python scripts. And most important, it is not a company, but a community. It works with Workbench, so you can adapt many workflows. And it has a web with a forum and a wiki to provide orientation and documentation. So what can FreeCAD do for AEC industry? FreeCAD already has several useful models that have been mainly developed by Jory Van Haber. Also, FreeCAD can work very close with Blender 3D, a famous open source software. You can work with IFC standards from the beginning in your projects, and you can use all the other FreeCAD workbench as well in your workflow. The four models present in FreeCAD provide many tools that architects and engineers can use. The first one is Draft Workbench, that is a basic classic 2D CAD environment. The second one is Arch Workbench that provide tools for 3D and BIM modeling. The third one is Big Workbench, an experimental workbench with advanced BIM features. And finally, you can use TextDraw Workbench that is for technical drawings for printing. Also, thanks to the open standards, you can use FreeCAD in a collaborative partnership with other open source software like LibreCAD or Inkscape, and inside FreeCAD you will find a rich ecosystem of many tools for new areas of architecture and construction industry, such as modular architecture or automatic construction. Here there are some examples of users' projects made with FreeCAD, and you can see that FreeCAD can be used for concept design, design development structural analysis, and much more. You can develop a full BIM model and extract from that model all the information for CAD documentation, including printing sheets, layout, without assistance of any other CAD software. Even you can save your project as IFC file to be shared on other software such as Blender BIM for more BIM development or to generate renders for architectural visualization. 
Here, another example for a real world case. I used several photos to generate a point cloud file using Riga 3D. Then I export, imported this file into Blender to model an accurate mesh geometry. And finally, I exported the file into FreeCAD for a final beam modeling process using Arch Workbench. In FreeCAD, I was able to extract all the data necessary to generate plans, elevation, and section views in the same 3D space using Draft Workbench. And with Textural Workbench, I created all the technical drawing with text, dimension, hashes, data tables, etc. This documentation was exported as PDF file to be printed. If you want to know more about this collaborative workflow, there are tutorials in the wiki of OSARC community with the description of the process and all the FreeCAD files for study. Please visit FreeCAD webpage to say hi to the community and download and try this amazing technology. Thank you very much for your attention. Yep, uh, so the, uh, these were uh, my presentation I wanted to show you today. Um, to wrap up uh, kind of my my whole, my whole speech today, whole, whole, whole presentation, uh, as you can see, we uh, the community achieved quite a bit just in a few years, and I believe this is really the way to go. This, there are really big changes coming. Uh, I think this is the future of, of the industry, and you are very much welcome to join us. Just go to our forum, to uh, community.org, and talk to us. Uh, just if you have any ideas, any projects you'd like to share, you'd like uh, to get some support or anything, you'll be very welcome, and we'll be happy to, to have you with us. Thank you guys uh, for your attention. If you have any questions, feel free to, to drop them in chat and I'll see you around. Thank you very much, Jan, for the presentation. Yeah. Um, does anyone have any questions they want to drop in the chat or in the Q&A? I don't think anybody did. Well, if not, I just want to say thank you again. And that was really cool seeing all five different presentations um, and the bit of a roundup in the beginning from you. Um, so thank you very much. That was very cool. Yeah, thank you guys for this opportunity. We were very happy to work with you. It's always very nice, very nice to work with you. Also with, with Spackle and all. <laughs> we're really looking forward to what it's going to become. So, yeah. Hope to see more people, maybe from the speckle side, joining into the OSR community. <laughs> cool. Thank you very much. Um, well, if there are no Thank more you. questions, we can wrap it up. Yeah. Thanks. Have fun today. Bye-bye. <laughs> Thank you. Bye. <laughs>